you've decided that you're going to follow the Lord's leading and, and go to Haiti in September of this year. We were planning on going down for September, October, and November. And we've been talking to Eugene and getting lots of counsel from different people and, and just this is kind of going to be a lead in three months and just to see if this is going to fit our life and it'll be kind of a trial period to say yes we will continue on or no this isn't really fitting right now but we're, we're just praying that the Lord would just give us wisdom and um, we have taken this step of faith because our ducks are not in a row. <laughs> we're, we have, he's been kind of calling us for the last two years to be involved in, in Haiti and we're feeling um, maybe a little bit fearful and a little bit trepidation, and yet knowing that he's called us for a reason, and he's given us a vision for it. His vision, we pray, not our vision, because our vision will be useless. Um, we're just going to go with servant hearts and say, God, what do you need us to do here? Um, where do we fit? How do we fit? Bonnie is needing some help right now, and we're just kind of going down the servant part saying, whatever the tasks are that you need filled, Lord, show us and help us to be willing. And it doesn't have to be anything lined up, just day by day, uh, the different tasks. There's so much to do there. There's the orphanage, there's the seniors' home, they're starting a new um, baby care. A project where we're trying to teach and train the mums of the the town, uh, the city of Limbe how to feed and care for their babies because there's so many babies that are malnourished and are dying unnecessarily and we're finding them coming to the orphanage like a lot of the times these mums will die and they'll be just left you know family members that are left to look after these children and and they're feeding them like Coke and tea and things like that, that, you know, babies are dying unnecessarily. So that's another project that's on the go. But yeah, um, I'm really praying that the Lord will just give us a servant heart. And um, I think probably we're going for us more than anything else. I think he's wanting to uh, shape us and mold us and show us um, his heart for our lives and how he wants to change us. So we're, we're excited, but we're walking in a little bit of fear so we could, we could pray that God would just cover our hearts with peace and he could cover um, all our ducks so they'd line up. And, <laughs> and we know that you know if this is his will, he will uh, continue to provide what's necessary for us to go. And yeah. Yeah, it's, I went to Haiti the first time in 2006, <clears throat> and kind of since then we kind of had a, kind of a tug, I guess would be the word, but it wasn't until a couple of years ago that, uh, I'm involved with the mission too, so I kind of got background information that not everybody has, we started the sister church ministry, which is where I first thought where we would be involved, the Orphanage was going for a few years. The school's been going for quite a few years. And then we started the seniors' home. And Jason and Nikki went down. They actually did a lot of the behind the scenes stuff, getting it all going. And what happened uh, two years ago is when the sister church thing came at our board meetings, it came to our understanding as a board that we didn't have enough people there to support the teams that were coming in. So that's where I first thought we could be involved was um, Deb's a good cook and people need to eat, so that's we got her made. And they needed somebody to help deliver people to the different rural areas, and I don't mind driving, so I, well, I can handle that. But then this winter, things changed a little bit, and as of two weeks ago, Jason and Nikki have resigned from the seniors' home. So Eugene called and and asked if we were interested in doing that. They need Deb worse than they need me. They need medical people. <laughs> so, 
So anyway, we we met a few times and we feel that we're to go. We had a lot of things that need to happen. Um, support is a big one. Uh, rough number is 3,000 a month. It depends on what the U.S. and Canadian dollar does. Uh, in Haiti, you can only stay in for 90 days and then you have to leave the country and then go back. So a lot of our costs are getting back and forth <laughs> uh, as well as our supporting ourselves there. There's a suite that would be living in that's we got to see what's there for furnishings and stuff like that that's secondary at this point but uh, that's kind of the homework we need to get done first and get all that done plus see what we need with the Canadian government for keeping our citizenship valid here and health coverage and there's all sorts of different things so we are going to go meet Jason and Nikki here in the next month probably they're they're living south of Florida so we're going to talk to them and see what the pros and cons were from their side of it and then kind of get a bit of an understanding of what's going on there if it all works out it will be uh, staying there what we basically call full-time it'll be September October November every year out for December January February March out for April May, June, a little into July, and then out till September, and that's the rotation that could go around. And uh, it's uh, kind of a little bit. We have to either sell our house or rent it, because I can't afford to keep it there and just look at it. <laughs> so we'll see what God wants us to do with that, and go from there. Purge a lot of things, 40 years of marriage plus, and you have a few things you might not need anymore. And uh, we'll just go from there and see what happens. So, anyway, that's we just wanted you to know. We had we didn't want to tell the church till we told our employers. <laughs> we didn't want to and our family. So the next step is just keep proceeding. Some of our devotions lately too have been really interesting because it's been kind of like what is competing for for my love for Jesus. What is competing against stopping me from and, or us from being involved and, and being obedient and following. And we had to admit that our family and our, our kids and our grandkids and our parents and our, our, those are the things that have been competing for our love <laughs> for Jesus because, you know, we want to be involved in their life. We want to see them as often as we can. We want to be going to grads and you know, hockey games and volleyball games and all the different things that um, you get to do when you have kids around. So those things have been competing for our love and uh, we, we just want our kids to know that um, we love them dearly. And we don't, um, don't think anything less of them, but we want to be obedient to the Lord and we want to um, take that step of faith and and another thing was there was another one that said do you love me and it was a, the, the one where Peter was with Jesus and Jesus kept saying to him do you love me and G Peter kept saying yes Jesus I love go feed my lamb do you love me yes Jesus and Jesus said go feed my lamb mm -hmm. he said that a third time and that was just kind of like okay do I love him I need to obey, and we're not going as heroes, we are not going as anything but servants because we're going into a new culture, we're going into a language we don't know, we're going into a country that's dedicated to Satan, we're going into all kinds of things that we have no idea what we're going into. So we are depending 100% on the Lord to provide and protect and lead and give us wisdom and give us grace and the mercy that we need for when we're maybe doing something that we shouldn't be doing and, and it's a whole new thing and God's given us an, another chance in our old age to serve him. We never thought, we always thought about this but it never came to a, 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 a place in our life where we felt free to go and now we feel like we have raised our children and our grandchildren are getting older and we need to go before we're too old. <laughs> so, um, and, and leaving 
moms behind too, like Maxine and my mom, and and that's hard. That's hard to leave, and and uh, you know you want to be there for them too. But just be praying for them too that they they would um, accept it Bye, and, and be able to um, have peace about it all too. So we just covet your prayers and we covet um, your prayers. <laughs> your prayers for what we what we need to do before we go. <laughs> Questions? Are there any, like, this is a time just to ask some questions if you got, or? Yeah. And don't come down, we're going to pray for you guys, so. But just, yeah, any questions you guys have got, or? I mean, God could still stop this in the middle of it all, so, you know, there's, <laughs> there's a few months left to go here, and, but, yeah. but I, we just have to take the step of faith and actually start telling people, because then, if you hide it, it's kind of like, well, we can change our minds at the last minute, <laughs> and nobody knows. <laughs> So uh, it's kind of that way we feel like, okay, we need to start asking for prayer support for this so that we're not hiding behind this thing that we can change your mind and, and kind of forget about it. <laughs> I told Bill the other night, you've got to have Melanie over because she speaks a kind of Creole and I'm not very good at language. Deb's gift is way better at that, so I'll have to rely on the orphans to translate for us and go from there. The other thing I would like to pray, have you pray for too, is our orphans have been in the orphanage for a few years, and quite a few of them are getting to the age where they need to become citizens. And part of my vision and the board's vision is to teach them how to be good citizens, and they can be involved with the ministry there too. They can be the people that can help with the orphanage or the seniors' home or the sister church work, and it won't always have to be a Canadian or U.S. person to go down there to do that. So. That's part of what they've started already. Jason's already been doing that a bit, but that's what we need to do. You don't just have a kid in an orphanage until they're 18, 19, and just open the door and kick them out. They need to, to and there's lots of work. The Barkman Center has maintenance stuff that can be done. We were down there a year ago now, and the kids really want to be with you and be involved, but they have never been taught how to cut wood or nail it together or paint or so. That's the kind of thing I can see we need to get involved with their lives, too. Ready? Oh, broken hearted. Sorry? Broken We're broken hearted. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be back in December if, if we go. <laughs> I shouldn't be saying it, but you know what? That's just part of my brain set here, so. <laughs> yeah. What do you guys think? I think for anybody who takes that leap of faith, um, you know, no matter which way it, it turns out, you'll be better for it, and you'll you'll be grateful for for taking that uh, step. Um, you know, who knows the future? You don't, but uh, just the fact that you take that step in faith, I think God honors that. Yeah. My bosses figure I'm nuts to leave a job that is a paycheck to go somewhere where you got to raise your money. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. That does seem like I've been cultivating you guys for this. I know us moving here to Canada, you guys were definitely from a strong rock here for us. <laughs> um, and now just seeing that you guys are going to be able to go to Haiti and try to foster that there with them. With the teams that are coming down and with the old folks home and as well as really challenging, like you said, the parts that we're wanting to grow you guys in. It just seems to be a good fit all the way around, mm -hmm. even though it's really hard to It's been interesting because it's been a call kind of for two mm -hmm. years, but it's never ever really come together and then, then all of a sudden it feels like the pieces have all kind of chinked in. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that we are going to be doing is we're going to be having, um, God willing, uh, having some counseling sessions with Tom Walker, that probably a lot of you know. Um, he's just going to be doing some counseling for going into a new culture. What are you going to be up against? What are some of the things that 
we personally don't know that we have that we need to change, mm -hmm. um, that we're blind to and unaware of as individuals and as a couple. Um, so that you go in with your eyes open a little <coughs> bit more instead of just kind of getting lambasted, but you know, the side of the head because you're making the mistakes that um, maybe you could have had counseling and, and understood, okay, I'm doing this, that's not good. So. So um, you can pray on that regard that we would have eyes to see and hear in those counseling mm -hmm. sessions so that we wouldn't be um, whatever. <laughs> fools. We don't want to be fools. We want to hear. We want to hear what God's trying to teach us through that too. So are you also having kind of like video chats and stuff with Ray and Bonnie before then? Or? <coughs> We, we're going to contact Ray and Bonnie yet yeah, once. We're going to talk to Jason and Nikki first, and then we're going to talk to Ray and Bonnie and, and see what all they need for us to be doing. And right now, um, Bonnie is feeling really overwhelmed because they're just the only missionary couple left there right now, uh, besides Paul and Belle, who are getting up in age. Like, they're into their 70s, 80s. So they can only take on so much. So now JC and, and Nikki are gone. They've got all those seniors there, but Jacqueline is over there still looking after them, but, uh, that young man. And he's doing a super job, so that's great. But she's got her hands full. Mm -hmm. She's got 32 or 33 orphans, and like they just got a new orphan here another about a month ago, two months ago, added to their mix. So. Yeah, you put in all those babies and all the way up to age 18. And, and then there's the, they don't have a teacher there right now. So she's trying to fill in all the teaching positions for the girls. Like they do have a male, or uh, a male that comes in and teaches. But there's a lot of open gaps right now that they're feeling a little bit overwhelmed right. with. So. And especially Bonnie. Mm -hmm. We've been told to the place we're going to stay in is two bedrooms. So if anybody wants to come and help for a while, <laughs> it's open. One encouraging thing is uh, one of the first boys that started in the school quite a few years ago has actually come back first this year as a, a dentist. And if he's working in the, the same building we'll be living in, he's got a dentistry office. And what the mission has done for him is if he gives two, two days a week to the school and the seniors and that, they let them use the office to make money besides, because you have to make a living. But, so there is there is return for the investment, mm -hmm. but in a country that has really got zero for structure, it's mm -hmm. it's not going to happen overnight. It's, mm -hmm. it's just a matter of working with them. And one of the new projects that they've got going on, and they are using the, the orphans are going and working there, is they've bought a property of land, and it's a it's a fairly big parcel of land, and they're building a wall all around this piece of land and then they are going to be using it to grow their own food hopefully for the or for the orphanage and for the seniors home so i don't know how much you know, how long that's going to take to get up and running and they're probably going to have to paul and bell have been talking about building a house over there and living there i don't know if that'll happen because i mean for pillaging and mm -hmm. you know losing stuff but yeah there's all kinds of stuff going on so yeah, the group we're with there in March, their church is going back there in the fall to finish off the fence. And you're going to be able to help them. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, let's just pray for you guys. Um, what's appropriate? Man, we got to get a little closer to you guys. Come on, we're family. <laughs> go, go right here in this open spot. <laughs> Stay seated if you want, or come closer if you like. But what would you do if it was your Lou and Deb? <laughs> so we'll have a few people pray, and then we go. But God, uh, this is our opportunity to uh, I mean, you're watching. You're watching. This is whether or not we sit here and pray for Lou and Deb, uh, they're praying, and you're leading. And you know, Paul said, you know, I want you to pray for me, because then there will be more people who will thank God when God answers the prayer. So 
God, we want to praise you. We want to see answered prayer. We want to see them get $3,000 a month plus in support. And we want to see them leave September 1st sharp. And we want to see the Senior Center develop uh, brand new Christians who have been in voodoo their whole lives that came off the street. And we want to see orphans that uh, if they had not had this home, they would be living on the street or worse. We want to see them cared for and trained up and become useful, is what Peter said. And so we know that Lou and Deb are, are just vessels for this stuff, and they're not adequate, and they don't have all the skills, and they don't have all the experience, and all the stuff. But you know what? It's the Spirit of God that makes us adequate to minister the Spirit of God. So we just pray for the Spirit of God to come on them in a really awesome way to help them and to, to give them the information they don't have and to give them the emotion they don't have and to give them the wisdom they don't have, Lord. Uh, we just pray, Lord, that between now and then you just, just open up the, the floodgates of heaven and just start dumping it down on them. God, all the stuff they need and they don't have. Provide it, provide it, provide it. We'll say thank you, God. We're going to do another report right there at the end of August. And we want to see some of these prayers answered. We want to see $3,000 plus. Dollars. We want to see a, a, a departure date. God, care for these things. And we want you to be glorified. That's the whole deal here, Lord. So anyway, that's my prayers for him. Lord, we, uh, we want to support Lou and Dad, Lord, because we know that their heart is right. Their heart is mm -hmm. humble. They're going, Lord, not to... Uh, glorify themselves, Lord, but to glorify you and to answer your call. Yeah. So just that. And thank you, Lord, that you have, uh, you have selected them. You have brought them, brought them this far, Lord. And, uh, we'll carry them through. And so we just thank you, Lord, that you are, we're there. Uh, there will be hard times. There will be great times. But, Lord, through it all, you're the constant, so we thank you for that. We just want to support them and pour out the blessings that only you can give. Bless them, Lord, we pray. We love them, Lord. Mm -hmm. Bless them and use them, Lord. Lord, I just pray that you would but scary time. Um, God, I just thank you that um, Lord, they're part of our body here and they will continue to be a part of us, yet they will be over there. And that's kind of cool, that thing about the body that um, we will have a connection over there to the work in Haiti. We won't be disconnected from them because we're bound together through your spirit which works in the body of Christ. And so, Lord, um, I know that it's going to be tough for them leaving their families or their moms and um, their, their grandkids and their children, Lord, but um, we're all still connected through your Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, just continue to remind them of that. And, Lord, as we see one part of our body going and taking a leap of faith, it encourages the rest of us to um, take leaps of faith in whatever direction you ask to do it, God. So thank you for that encouragement that um, they're already teaching us and giving to us, Lord. And I pray that that would extend to their kids and to their grandkids, Lord Jesus, that they would see this and um, it would be a great example to them and to all of us. We just ask now that you would just continue to keep them connected to you, to the vine, Lord. Pour out your spirit in a powerful way to provide for them all these things that matter to them. That they don't have yet, but that you will provide at the time. Of the so we are just thankful and waiting on you, Lord, to see you show your glory as you provide for the needs that they have. We just praise you.
circulating this idea. You know, you know exactly what our hearts need. Thank you for all the yeses along the way that I brought a little bit of death to this point here. I ask that you would just keep giving them the grace to continue to say yes to you. Mm -hmm. I love these two. You have been a blessing to me. I know you love them so much. And uh, thank you for thank you for caring for them. And God, I ask that you would protect them from discouragement. Mm -hmm. uh, protect them from the feeling of overwhelm. Say in John 15, that uh, fruitfulness comes from abide. So would you give them grace to abide? Grace to abide. And that you would strengthen them. And that it would be your strength in them that allows them to, <laughs> to move and to work and to do, Lord. But you would you please give them your vision as they enter Haiti. There's going to be so many things that they see. May they see it through your eyes. May you give them focus. And God, they're so loving. They love so many people here, and so many people here love them. And so we ask that, uh, that you would take care of those guys. And you said, seek first your kingdom, and all these other things will be added unto you. So Lord, all the needs that they have, um, emotional, relational, uh, financial, Lord, add it to them, Lord, they are seeking you first. Show us how we could support them, too. themselves to what you have planned, Lord. I just pray for protection over them, Lord. Just their mm -hmm. any spiritual warfare, Lord. Just keep them safe in your world. Mm -hmm. Lord, just let them to grow and to free themselves from anything <coughs> that Satan has a hold on, Lord. Just pray that you would just keep them close to you, Lord. Watch over them and fill them. Fill them so full, Lord, that they can just pour everything out and just be them stand. I just thank you for the willingness to go. Thank you. Well, we trust you, God. Um, we love following you. Life is so boring if we didn't have God around. We just keep it interesting. And uh, or may we all journey with you and Deb. May this be our journey as well. May this be our trip. May we connect with them through this whole journey. So I pray that this announcement would open up more connection to them, more connection to this Haiti experience, not less, not more distance. So just connect us more, tie us tighter at the hip through this uh, experience, God. We, we want to grow in that unity and solidarity that you spoke of in your Bible. We want to, we want to grow in that because of it. So we pray these things and bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> So like I said, I just want to connect a couple of dots. I mean, what do you... It's, this, is, this is an opportunity that we don't want to miss. Sherry, if you could pull number three down just a little bit. Um, Song of Solomon and Missions Work. Jesus Gets His Bride. That's good. Good you know, Ephesians 5 says, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. And if the church submits to Christ, so wives should submit to everything and to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way husbands should love their wives as their own bodies, he who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church. Because we are members of his body. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother, 
and holds fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I'm saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. So, you know, we have been, we have been talking about this theme of God marrying his people, uh, becoming one with them. And, you know, we've looked at a bunch of the passages, a bunch of the stories, but this is the driving motivator of God's everything, is love. It, it, it is. This is the biggest theme. There's no bigger theme. God's love. It, it, it causes him to do silly things, like send Jesus from his comfortable place to earth, to live life in wearing a potato sack his whole life, right? That's what they wore. And... and uh, and then to give himself up and die on a cross. And, and you know, 2 Corinthians 8 does say, God sent Jesus from the riches of heaven so that we might, in our poverty, gain his riches. <laughs> you know, and like we were talking in the board meeting this morning, you know, lose bosses don't understand, but this is a great chance for them to understand. You know, this is a chance to tell that story. God left heaven to come here so that our poverty, what do you mean I'm poor? I'm the owner of four seasons. You are spiritually bankrupt. How are you going to get spiritual riches in heaven? You will not take this with you, you know? You can actually demonstrate it now, right? Like, it's, it's really cool. God's love drives him to do these things. And so, um, Jesus marrying his people, does God want to marry us? Answer? Does God want to marry Haitians? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what other thing is, is going to be uh, driving God and sending Lou and Deb? What other thing is God going to try to put into Lou and Deb on their journey over there? That God wants his people. He wants them. He wants all of them and he wants them in fullness. The love, the, they would love the Lord to God with all their heart. I'm going to skip this part here. So this opens up a question that I'm just going to touch on for a second. To, to help us think about God in, the, in, in this light. Does God love us? Does God love you? I'm just going to put it. Does God love you and me? Does he love? Okay. And we have a picture in our heads of what that means. Is he in love with you? Why do we kind of wonder a little bit? Are you allowed to say that? Why do we think that? Are you allowed to say that? Why do we think that? Seems a little too intimate. Seems a little too vulnerable. He's a little too into me. Because I can keep God at a distance, so why can't God keep me at a distance? We have lots of people we love that we keep at a distance. So why wouldn't God do the same thing? Yeah, God loves me the way I love him. We have our space. So but if we say God's in love, what does that mean? about the relationship it means he's going to start he does goofy things he puts himself out there he makes himself vulnerable he throws rocks at the window at the, in the middle of the night and says come come hang out with me because he's in love so the difference the difference <laughs> is huge if God's in love with the Haitian people he wants to go get them so he's going to do goofy things. And he's going to call people to feel that love and start doing goofy things. We, we, we can sit and listen to hear another person's story. We can watch a Lou and Des. They're going to go to Haiti. But we can feel an emotional distance because God's put the burden on their heart. But that's the question, right? It's like, what about my heart? <laughs> well, how do we get that? We get it through love. Okay, which is more fit? Why should that change anything? And then how does that affect missionary work? This is, this is really important. If love is so key here, missionary work completes love. But who does it complete love in? The missionary. Pretty much the missionary, right? I mean, you, I'm not saying the people don't get feel love, and that's the point. They should. <laughs> if, and... and no one here would ever do this. If a missionary shows up and they're just like, I'm going to hit them with the gospel and they're all going to come to Jesus and everything's going to work, uh, they're in for a, a ride. Right? And why are they in for a ride? 
Because part of this journey is to work out love for those who aren't lovable. I've been to Haiti four times now, three times now. And finally on this last trip, I'm like, oh yeah, they're evil people. <laughs> Not lovable. Not lovable. But look at this. We, you know that phrase that we use? Um, watch, this, watch this phrase like, unpack. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. Okay, read our headline again. Missionary work completes love in, in us, the missionary. This, this is huge. What's that if doing? Look, read that if. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. What is that if doing to this statement? Someone just say it out loud. Choice. And what's hanging on the choice? And the benefit of loving one another will be? What's God's goal according to that statement? He wants to perfect love in us. He doesn't perfect love in us by getting us to love Him. How does He perfect love in us? Oh, it's, he's way up there. That's easy to love, you know? He shows up on Sundays, you know? He's never done me wrong, really, much. Don't hold too much against him. But loving other people, I don't need to do that because I've got my ticket to heaven. And when I get there, God's going to say, love's not perfected in you. Why? You didn't love each other. It's huge. If we're going to be the bride of Christ, does God want to marry someone who doesn't have love perfected in them? Just be honest. From God's perspective. So how is he going to perfect love in us? By giving us each other. <laughs> so everyone, just right now, decide to say I love you. I love you love me, I love you. Let's just say it. I love you. It's good. It feels good. Okay? Exercising love for each other completes love in us. Which will make us a ready variety for him. Okay? We would all love a perfect everything, but God's using the imperfections to perfect love in us. <laughs> we can't love like God until we love the unlovable. There's no way, because that's how God loves. God is trying to perfect love in his bride for eternity. We are trying to get through life with the most money and the least hassle. True or false? Tell the truth. It is true, oh, because truth. part of my angst is like, I won't be able to sleep in my own bed. <laughs> There'll be goats out all night. Chickens. I can't <laughs> I don't do well without my sleep. <laughs> uh, we think that we can just play games, don't we? We think we can play through our whole lives. And God's like, nope, I want a bride that has love perfected in her. Yosemite Sam is not the way to live. So who has the better chance to learn love? Trick question. <laughs> Lou and Deb in Haiti, think about it, they go to Haiti, 30 some orphans, kids who had two parents for 30 kids, think there might be some issues, okay, the seniors who spent their whole life under the life of voodooism, and now they live in a senior center with Lou and Deb, are they going to be totally lovable, okay, in, in, in a society, that you've all seen pictures of. Okay, are they going to have the be is, are Lou and Deb going to have the better chance to learn love, or are we here going to have the better chance to learn love? Us here, we have our rhythms, we have our comfort, we have our jobs, we have our things. Uh, is this a trick question? I think both. I think both. <laughs> so, like, you know, we send Lou and Deb. Praise God, God, I, you know, God eyeballed them up. 
for this work, and don't worry, he's not eyeballing you for anything. You know, don't worry about that. You can just... Okay. But what is the difference? What is the difference? You said he has to leave you next you know, that's probably it. They're going to do it over there. We're going to do it over here. God's going to bring them people, and guess what? God's going to bring us people. <laughs> he's he's going to bring us each other. You guys left the comfort of California to come here. Yeah, <laughs> made it even more comfortable. <laughs> you know, that's actually what we thought at first. We touched six figures our last year there. It was comfortable. Lots of sushi. <laughs> but Sherry hates her job there, <laughs> so it's much better here. Yes, the income dropped, but life got better. You know, this is this is huge, God. Guys, <clears throat> God is trying. He's trying to perfect love in us, if we would just love each other. <laughs> and so we would never going to go do that there. We're going to do that here. God's going to arrange for it. It's going to happen to all of us. It's going to happen to all of us. So let's not push away the opportunities to have love perfected in us. Let us embrace them. <laughs> embrace them. So just a wrap-up prayer. God, this is a very important morning for the life of our church. And uh, we are all honored to be here. We are honored to be here. Set this morning, set this turn of events down as a, uh, a memory stone. You often did that. I set down a memory stone for our church to say this, this was a turning point for our church. And God wants to get the lesson that he's teaching Lou and Deb into our whole church. So that is our whole journey. It is a, a journey of learning from your spirit what God is like and having his likeness come out of us. So we just bless them one more time and we ask that we would be submitted to the same lessons that they're going to have to learn as well. And they're just as much a missionary as we are. Nothing's changed. So we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One thing you need to add, Matt, yeah. is that he gets us as his bride before we get that stuff perfected. Oh, sure. Because he's not mm -hmm. waiting for us to be perfect to do it. He's there working with us as we're part of the family already. Yeah. The, the tragedy of abortion and early child death is that those kids, they never got a shot at having love perfected in them. It's the satanic ploy. So we didn't die at birth. So let's not waste our chance. <laughs> All right, lots to talk about, lots to think about, lots to figure about. Good to see everybody. Have a good week. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs>